Sunan Abu Dawood The Book of the Prayer for Rain Salatul Istisqa Chapter on the Collection of Chapters Regarding Salatul Istisqa Prayer for Rain It was reported from Ma'mar, from Az-Zuhri, from Abbad ibn Tamim, from his paternal uncle, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went out with the people to ask, supplicate for rain. He prayed two rak'ahs, reciting aloud in them, and he turned his rida' around. And he raised his hands, supplicating and asking for rain. And he faced the qibla. This hadith is graded, sahih, or authentic. Footnote regarding he turned his rida' around. It is detailed in numbers 1163 and 1164. It was reported from Ibn Abi Dhib and Yunus from Ibn Shihab, who said, Abad ibn Tamim al-Mazani heard from his paternal uncle, who was a companion of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, that he said, One day, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went with the people, supplicating for rain. He turned his back to the people, supplicating to Allah, the Mighty and Sublime. Sulaiman ibn Dawood, one of the narrators, said, He faced the Qibla, turned his rida', then prayed two rak'ahs. Ibn Abi Dhib said, And he recited in them. Ibn Sarh, one of the narrators added, meaning recited aloud. This hadith is graded, sahih or authentic. It is reported from az zubaydi from Muhammad ibn Muslim. This hadith with this chain, a narration similar to 110 to 1162. He did not mention the prayer, and he said, he turned his rida' such that its right side was upon his left shoulder, and its left side was upon his right shoulder. Then he supplicated to Allah, the mighty and sublime. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, that is a zuhri who is also called Ibn Shihab. It was reported from Umar ibn Ghaziyah, from Abad ibn Tamim, from Abdullah ibn Zayd, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sought, supplicated for rain, while he was wearing a black khamisa. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, intended to switch it around, such that its lower part would become the higher part. But when he found difficulty in that, he switched it around over his shoulders. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Hisham ibn Ishaq ibn Abdullah ibn Kinana narrated that his father narrated to him that the Amir of al Madina, Al Walid ibn Uqba, according to Uthman, one of the narrators, Ibn Utba sent him to Ibn Abbas asking him about the rain prayer of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So he, Ibn Abbas, narrated, The Messenger of Allah went out, meaning in the open outside the city, wearing modest clothes in a state of humbleness and displaying neediness to Allah until he came to the prayer ground. Uthman, one of the narrators, added, and ascended the mimbar, and he did not deliver any khutbah such as you do, but he continued to supplicate and petition Allah and say the takbir. Then he prayed two rak'ahs as is performed for Eid. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Abu Dawood said, this narration is that of an nufayli and what is correct is Al-Walid ibn Utbah. Footnote, this narration is that of an nufayli meaning he heard this from an nufayli and Uthman ibn Abi Shayba, and most of it is the wording of an nufayli Comments, that it was like Eid prayer, means that it was like it in duration, that no adhan was called, the number of rak'ahs was the same, and the prayer preceded the khutbah, but the prayer for rain has no additional takbirs. Chapter on at which point does the Prophet, peace be upon him, turn his rida around when seeking rain? Abu Bakr ibn Muhammad reported from Abad ibn Tamim that Abdullah ibn Zayd informed him that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, once went out to the prayer ground, Musalla, in order to seek rain, and that when he wanted to supplicate, he faced the Qibla then turned his rida around. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr that he heard Abbad ibn Tamim saying, I heard Abdullah ibn Zayd al-Mazani saying, 
the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him went out to the prayer ground to seek rain, and he turned his rida' when he faced the qibla. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Turning the garment around is a sign of turning away from mistakes and towards repentance. So it is accompanied by supplications. Chapter on Raising the Hands During Istisqa Prayer for Rain Muhammad ibn Ibrahim reported from Umair, the freed slave of the children of Abi al-Lahm, that he saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, asking, supplicating for rain at Ahjar al-Zayt, close to az zawra He was standing, supplicating, asking for rain, with his hands raised in front of his face. His hands would not go above his head. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote Ahjar al-Zayt and az zawra are two areas outside of Al-Madinah. It was reported from Yazid ibn al-Fakhir, from Jabir ibn Abdullah, that he said, Some people came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, crying and complaining. So he said, Allahumma asqina ghithan mughithan, mari'an mari'a, nafi'an ghayra darrin, ajilan ghayra ajil. O Allah, grant us rain, a rain that is helpful, blessed, and fruitful for the crops, a rain that is beneficial, and not harmful, immediate, and not delayed, so the skies covered them up. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments 1. In terms of difficulty, hardship, or need, one should supplicate to Allah ardently, humbly, and repeatedly. 2. One may also request the living and present pious, devout men to supplicate to Allah for relief. It was reported from Qatada from Anas that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would not raise his hands in any supplication, except for seeking grain, for he would raise his hands until the whiteness of his armpits could be seen. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Hamad that Thabit had informed them from Anas that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would seek grain like this, meaning he stretched out his hands and he made the inner palms of his hands face the ground, until I could see the whiteness of his armpits. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, one who saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, informed me that he saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, supplicating at Ahjar al-Zayt with his hands spread out. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Aisha that she said, the people complained to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about the lack of rain. So he ordered that his mimbar be placed in the prayer ground, Musalla, and he appointed a day for the people to come out. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went out when the sun's rays could be seen, and sat on the mimbar. He glorified Allah and praised him, then said, You have complained regarding the lack of rain on your lands, and the delay of rain from its usual time. And Allah, the mighty and sublime, has commanded you to supplicate to him, and promised you that he will respond to you. Then he said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, La ilaha illa Allah, Yaf'alu ma yurid, Allahumma, Anta Allah, La ilaha illa Anta, Al-Ghaniyu, wa nahnu al-Fuqara, Anzil alayna al-Ghaytha, Waj'al ma anzalta lana quwatan wa balagan ila hain. All praise is due to Allah the Lord of all that exists, the ever-beneficent, the most merciful, King of the Day of Judgment. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. He does what He wills. O Allah, You are Allah. None has the right to be worshipped but You, the self-sufficient, who is not in need of anything. And we are the destitute, always in need of You. Send down rain upon us, and make what You have sent down a sustenance and a means to live by for a time being. Then he raised his hands, and continued to do so until the whiteness of his armpits could be seen. He then turned his back to the people, and turned, or turned upside down his rida around while his hands were raised. Then he turned around to face the people, descended from the mimbar, and prayed two rak'ahs. So Allah caused a cloud to form, and sent it forth its lightning and thunder. Then it rained by the permission of Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not return to his masjid, except that streams had started flowing in the streets. So when he saw how quickly they were looking for shelter, 
he laughed so much that his molars could be seen, and said, I testify that Allah is capable of doing all things, and that I am the slave of Allah and his messenger. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Abu Dawood said, This hadith is gharib, and its chain is good. The people of al Medina recite, King, Malik, of the Day of Judgment, and this hadith is a proof for them. Footnote Gharib, meaning it is only narrated through one route of transmission. It was reported from Abdul Aziz ibn Suhaib and Thabit from Anas who said, A drought once afflicted the inhabitants of al Medina during the time of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. So when he was delivering the khutbah on Friday, a person stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, our horses have perished and our sheep have perished. So pray to Allah to grant us rain. So the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him extended his hands and supplicated. And the sky was as clear as glass, but the winds began to blow and clouds formed and merged. Then the skies poured down rain. So we left the masjid, wading through the water until we reached our horses, and it continued raining until the next Friday. So that same man, or perhaps another man, stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, the houses have been destroyed, so pray to Allah that he withholds it, the rain from us. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, smiled and said, Hawalayna wala alayna, O Allah, around us and not on us. And I saw the clouds splitting up around al Medina as if they were a crown. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Supplicating for rain during the Friday khutbah is in accord with the sunnah. Shariq ibn Abdullah ibn Abi Namir reported that he heard Anas saying, and he mentioned similar to the narration, similar to hadith number 1174 of Abdul Aziz. He said, so the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him raised his hands to the level of his face and said, Allahumma sqina, O Allah, send rain on us, and the rest of the narration is the same. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Amr ibn Shu'ib from his father, from his grandfather, who said, When the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him supplicated for rain, he said, Allahumma sqibaladaka wa baha'imaka wa anshur rahmataka wa ahyi baladaka al-mayyit. O Allah, send rain for your worshippers and your creatures and spread your mercy and revive your dying land. This is the wording of Malik. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Footnote. This is the wording of Malik, that is, he narrated it through two chains of narration. And this is the wording of the chain of Malik ibn Anas. Chapter on the Eclipse, al khusuf Prayer. It was narrated by Ismail ibn Ulayya from Ibn Jurayj, from Ata, from Ubaid ibn Umayr, that he said, someone whom I trust to be truthful. Ata said, I presumed he meant Aisha, narrated to me. There was a solar eclipse during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, stood in prayer for a long time leading the people. Then he would go into Rukur, then stand, then go into Rukur, then stand, then go into Rukur, praying two rak'ahs. In each rak'ah, there would be three Rukurs. After the third one, he would prostrate. He stood for such a long time that the men were about to faint due to the length that he stood, so much so that buckets of water would be poured over them. He would say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the most great when going into Rukur. And when he stood up, Sami Allah liman hamidah. Allah has heard those who praise him. He continued praying until the sun was visible again. Then he said, Verily, the sun and the moon do not eclipse due to the death or life, birth of anyone. But these two eclipses are of the signs of Allah, the mighty and sublime, by which he frightens his servants. So when they are eclipsed, Hasten to the Salat. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments A prayer during the eclipse should be coupled with a khutbah and supplication. See also number 1191. Chapter on whoever said that it should be prayed with four rak'ahs during solar eclipse. 
It was reported from Yahya, from Abdul Malik, that Ata narrated to him from Jabir ibn Abdullah, who said, There was a solar eclipse during the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and it occurred the day that Ibrahim, the son of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, died. So the people said that the eclipse was due to the death of his son Ibrahim. Therefore, the Prophet, peace be upon him, stood in prayer and led the people in six rukus in four prostrations. He said the takbir, then he recited the Qur'an and made it a lengthy recitation. Then he went into ruku'ah for a period of time, similar to what he had stood. Then he raised his head and recited for a length of time that was less than the first recitation. Then he went into ruku'ah for a period of time similar to what he had stood. Then raised his head and recited a third time, slightly less than what he had recited the second time. Then he went into ruku'ah for as long as he had stood, then raised his head, and went into prostration, and prostrated twice. Then he stood up, and performed three ruku'ahs before he prostrated. Every ruku'ah was for a shorter duration than the one before it, and each ruku'ah would be similar to the length that he had stood. Then he moved backwards during his prayer, so the row behind him moved backwards as well. Then he went forward and stood in his usual place, and the row went forward as well. When he finished the prayer, the sun had appeared again. He said, O people, the sun and the moon are two of the signs of Allah, the mighty and sublime. They do not eclipse due to the death of any person. So when you see such an eclipse, then perform salat until it becomes clear again. And he narrated the remainder of the hadith. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Abu Zubair from Jabir who said, There was a solar eclipse during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. On a very hot day, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him led the companions in prayer and stood up for a long time, so much so that they began to fall. Then he went into ruku'ah for a long time. Then he stood up for a long time. Then he went into ruku'ah for a long time. Then he stood up for a long time. Then he prostrated twice. Then he stood up and repeated these acts. So it was for rukurs and for prostrations. And he completed the remainder of the hadith as in hadith number 1178. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Urwa ibn Zubayr reported from Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that she said, There was a solar eclipse during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went to the masjid, stood up, and said the takbir. And the people lined up in rows behind him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, recited the Qur'an for a long time. Then he said takbir and went into ruku'ah for a long time. Then he raised his head and said, Sami Allahu liman hamidah, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Allah hears those who praise him, our Lord, and to you belongs praise. So he stood up and recited a lengthy recitation, which was not as long as the first recitation. Then he said the takbir and went into ruku'ah for a long time, but not as lengthy as the first ruku'ah. Then he said, Sami Allahu liman hamidah, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Allah hears those who praise him, our Lord, and to you belongs praise. Then he repeated the same acts in the other raka'ah. So he completed four ruku'ahs and four prostrations, and the sun had become visible before he finished the prayer. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Kathir ibn Abbas, who said that Abdullah ibn Abbas would narrate that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him prayed during a solar eclipse, and his hadith was similar to the hadith of Urwa from Aisha, from the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, that he prayed two rak'ahs. Hadith number 1180 with two ruku' in each rak'ah. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Ubayy ibn Ka'b that he said, There was a solar eclipse during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. The Prophet peace be upon him led them in prayer, reciting one of the lengthy surah, and went into ruku' five times, and performed two prostrations. Then he stood up for a second ruk'ah, and recited a lengthy surah, and went into ruku'ah five times, and performed two prostrations. Then he sat as he was, facing the qibla, supplicating until the eclipse was over. 
This hadith is graded ضعيف or weak. Comments This hadith mentions five ruku'as, bowings, but it is a weak narration. Tawus reported from Ibn Abbas from the Prophet peace be upon him that he prayed during a solar eclipse. He recited the Quran, then went into ruku'ah, then recited, then went into ruku'ah, then recited, then went into ruku'ah, then recited, then went into ruku'ah. Then he prostrated, and he prayed the second rak'ah, in a similar fashion. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Thalab ibn Ibad al-Abdi, from the city of al-Basra, narrated that he attended a Friday khutbah of Samura ibn Jundab, in which Samura said, Once, a boy from the Ansar and I were practicing shooting arrows at two targets of ours, when the sun had reached two or three spears' length over the horizon in the eyes of a beholder. It returned as if it were at a numa. One of us said to the other, Let us return to the masjid, for by Allah, this eclipse of the sun will cause the messenger of Allah peace be upon him to do something new with the ummah. So we returned and saw him clearly, leading the people in prayer. He led us in this prayer longer than he had led us in any other prayer, and we could not hear his voice. Then he went into ruku'a longer than any other ruku'a he had led us in, and we could not hear his voice. Then he went into prostration longer than any prostration he had led us in before, and we could not hear his voice. He then repeated the same actions in the second raka'a. While he was sitting down in the second raka'a, the sun appeared again. He then said the taslim, stood up, praised Allah and glorified him and testified that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that he is the servant and messenger of Allah. Then Ahmad ibn Yunus, the narrator, completed the khutbah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This hadith is graded hasan, or good. Footnote. Tanuma. It is either a tree or a plant whose leaves and or fruits are dark in color or black. Qabisa al-Hilali narrated, There was a solar eclipse during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. So he went out in a state of anxiety. His garment was trailing behind him. I was with him at that time in al Madina. He prayed two rak'ahs and lengthened the standing. Then he completed the prayer while the sun had appeared and said, These are signs by which Allah the Mighty and Sublime causes people to fear him. So when you see it, then pray as if you are praying a new obligatory prayer. This hadith is graded ضعيف or weak. Another chain from Qabisa al-Hilali, who narrated, The sun was eclipsed, and the rest is the same as hadith number 1185, except that he said, Until the stars had appeared. This hadith is graded ضعيف or weak. Chapter on the recitation in the eclipse prayer. It was reported from Urwa, from Aisha, that she said, There was a solar eclipse during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went out to lead the people in prayer. He stood up, and I estimated that he had recited Surah Al-Baqarah, due to the length of the recitation. And she said, similar to the rest of the narration, as Hadith number 1185. Then he prostrated twice. Then he stood up and lengthened his recitation. And I estimated that he had recited Surat Al-Imran due to the length of the recitation. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments The length of the recitation, the bowings, and the prayer itself will depend upon the length of the eclipse. It was reported from a zuhri who said, Urwa ibn Zubayr informed me from Aisha that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him recited for a long time, and he recited aloud, meaning during the eclipse prayer. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Zayd ibn Aslam, from Atab ibn Yasar, from Ibn Abbas who said, There was an eclipse, so the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him prayed while the people prayed with him. He stood for a long time, similar to the length it takes to recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Then he bowed, and he continued with the narration. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Chapter on Crying out the prayer when there is a solar eclipse. Aisha narrated, There was a solar eclipse, 
So the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him commanded someone to proclaim the congregational prayer. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments An announcement may be made for the eclipse prayer. It is recommended, but there is no adhan nor iqama. Chapter on Giving Charity During an Eclipse Aisha narrated that the Prophet peace be upon him said, The sun and the moon do not eclipse due to the life, birth, or death of anyone. So when you witness it, an eclipse, supplicate to Allah, the mighty and sublime. Say the takbir and give charity. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Freeing Slaves During an Eclipse Asma narrated, the Prophet peace be upon him would command that slaves be freed during the eclipse prayer. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on whoever said that only two ruku'a should be performed in eclipse prayer. An numan ibn Bashir narrated, there was a solar eclipse during the Prophet's peace be upon him lifetime. So he started praying two ruku'as, one after another, and asking about it until it finished. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Footnote regarding, so he started praying two ruku'as, one after another and asking about it. They say that the meaning is that he was asking Allah, similar to what appears in the following narration, or that he would ask someone to look and see if the eclipse is over after praying, and pray again, or that he would indicate with his hand that someone should look during the prayer. Abdullah ibn Amr reported, there was a solar eclipse during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. So the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him stood up in prayer and it appeared that he would not go into ruku'a. Then he went into ruku'a and it appeared that he would not stand up. Then he stood up and it appeared that he would not prostrate. Then he prostrated and it appeared that he would not raise up. Then he raised up and it appeared that he would not prostrate. Then he prostrated and it appeared that he would not stand up, then he stood up, and repeated the same acts in the next rak'ah. He then whispered in the final prostration, Uff, uff, and said, O Lord, have you not promised me that you would not punish them while I was with them? Have you not promised me that you would not punish them while they are seeking forgiveness? So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, completed the prayer and the sun had appeared. And he narrated the rest of the hadith. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments The different methods of performing the prayer reflect the differences in the duration of the eclipse. Abdul Rahman ibn Samurah narrated While I was shooting my arrows during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, there was a solar eclipse, so I tossed my arrows away and said, I will see what the eclipse has caused the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him to do today. I reached him while his hands were raised. He was glorifying Allah, praising him, saying the tahleel and supplicating. He continued to do so until the sun appeared. He recited two surahs and performed two ruku'as. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote Tahleel that is, saying, La ilaha illallah, or similar. Chapter on Prayer at Times of Darkness, or Similar Occurrences Ubaidullah ibn al-Nadr narrated from his father that he said, There was a darkness during the time of Anas ibn Malik. So I went to him and said, O Abu Hamza, did similar incidents used to happen during the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him? He said, I seek Allah's refuge. If the wind were to blow strongly, we would rush to the masjid, fearing the judgment had arrived. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Chapter on Prostrating at Times of Calamities Ikrimah narrated that Ibn Abbas was informed of the death of someone, one of the wives of the Prophet peace be upon him. So he fell into prostration. He was asked, Do you prostrate at this time? He replied, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, When you witness a sign, prostrate. And what sign is more grave than the departure of the wives of the Prophet peace be upon him? This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments The death of a close relative or a virtuous person is a big loss in the event of such a catastrophe. People should turn to Allah and remember him.